William, thank you so much for joining us. Can I begin by asking you a simple question, but a very complicated one in a way. What is philosophy and what drew you to it? Yes, a simple question. Um, I like the definition of philosophy given by the great uh, American philosopher Alvin Plantinga. He said that philosophy is simply thinking hard about something. And that seems to me to be correct. Philosophy explores the foundational questions of every discipline at the university. And what attracted me to becoming a philosopher was my becoming a Christian. My junior year in high school, I became a Christian and suddenly found myself committed to certain metaphysical claims, such as the existence of God, the reality of objective moral values, the knowability of truth, the belief in a soul that survives the death of the body. And so at once I was catapulted into thinking about these profound and difficult questions. And so for me, I am a philosopher because I am a Christian. Well, now that's really interesting. Let's explore that for a moment. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Bertrand Russell, in his History of Western Philosophy, was reluctant to concede that Thomas Aquinas could have been a philosopher because he came with a preset uh, set of assumptions. Uh, he was a Christian. Yes. And uh, he, you know, Bertrand Russell said, well, you can't be a philosopher if you're setting out to defend, his, his words rather than mine, uh, to defend and understand Christianity. According to him... It shouldn't be anything other than the dispassionate quest for understanding without any settled commitments, especially religious. How would you respond to that? Because clearly you're very openly and boldly coming in at the other end. Yes. Well, the irony is that Russell's conception of philosophy was actually the same as Aquinas's. Aquinas also made this division between theology and philosophy and thought that philosophy per should be pursued only on the basis of reason uh, and not on the basis of, uh, for example, divine revelation. So actually, Aquinas was very much in agreement with Russell on what a philosopher is and does. This view of philosophy, however, is today quite outmoded. There's no reason at all to think that a philosopher should not avail himself of all of the sources of knowledge that he believes are uh, at his disposal, whether these be the sciences, uh, metaphysics, rational intuition and logic, or divine revelation. And so on the contemporary scene, it's widely acknowledged that you can come at your philosophical questions from a point of view. You simply need to acknowledge what that point of view is, give arguments in support of it, and be prepared to interact with those who disagree with your point of view. But today, the view of philosophy that seems to be the consensus view might be called dialogical pluralism. Namely, you have a plurality of viewpoints from which you come at subjects, and then you dialogue honestly uh, with your uh, conversation partners about these. It's um, My impression is now that there is a, a new openness to faith in uh, for philosophical circles, but probably mm -hmm. to the average person on the street, there's a perception that universities in particular, uh, their philosophical schools and academics are fiercely opposed to religion. Is that a false misunderstanding? Yes, it I mean, is. There would be those a false who are. Understanding. And, and I appreciate, John, your perceptiveness in seeing the revolution that has been going on in the field of Anglo-American philosophy since the late 1960s. Um, since that time, Christian philosophers have been coming out of the closet and defending uh, their beliefs with sophisticated philosophical arguments in the finest philosophical journals, in the professional societies, and in the top academic presses. So that today, um, Christian philosophy has a respected minority status, a place at the table in contemporary discussions. I think, unfortunately, this has yet to filter down to the man in the street. 
from the ivory tower. And so he still has that misimpression of philosophy that was accurate, say, from 1900 to about 1970, um, in which philosophy was dominated by atheistic and scientistic um, viewpoints. But that's quite uh, out of fashion today. That's interesting because, uh, you know, when you listen to the hubbub on the streets, a lot of it centers on how just how uh, anti our culture, religion, hmm. uh, the Enlightenment, uh, even science and reason and all of the great ideologies, things like critical theory are in our universities. So you've got this contrast. You've, you, you've got a discipline yes. where there's some very clear thinking, very honest thinking going on. And you've got, I'm going to be really blunt here, the intellectually very flimsy concepts that are coming out of a lot of uh, left-wing campuses. Yes. Yeah, I think you're right, John, in saying that what we're seeing is an increasing polarization. I would not at all want to deny the presence of these anti-Christian and secular movements within philosophy, but I am saying that at the same time, there is a resurgence, a renaissance of theistic and particularly Christian philosophy in our day, and that and these viewpoints find themselves locked in a titanic intellectual struggle that is going on in our Western culture. Did you enjoy this episode? We cannot get good public policy out of a bad debate. If you value vital conversations like this one, please like, share, subscribe, and join the conversation.